And um, this is basically to provide an end-to-end -end purchasing cycle in SAP s Now, the one thing which is uh, very, you know, people are curious about, that when we are using SAP s then how that SAP s look like and how it is different than SAP ECC, the transaction code are same or they're different and this and that. Some differences, of course, are there. But if you look at it, so now this is SAP s Now you're looking at SAP s if you go to the system, if you see the system status, and uh, in the system status, you can see that it is working in the Linux, and then it is SAP S4 HANA, SAP HANA database working on SAP S4 HANA. You can also see some different product versions also. So if we go back here in the detail, then you can see what kind of app and what kind of other systems and other components are there in this box so that you can always go and check all the different uh, elements if what kind of industry solution is there what kind of other system and what kind of other applications which has been implemented in this so this also include mdg it also have a um, you know scp user interface uh, which is for Fury and all the different applications which is being implemented or being deployed, uh, you can see here. Okay, so so that is basically looking at SAP S4 HANA. You can see here on product version, and uh, these are the different product version. It has a SAP S4 HANA foundation. This is SAP S4 HANA on, promise, on premises, um, which is SAP S4 HANA 2020. So which version we are looking at? We are looking at SAP S4 HANA 2020, which is one of the latest version. In this version, uh, Fury is also installed. So we can uh, log in into SAP with the Fury. There is another video on the Fury itself. So we are looking at SAP S4 HANA 2020. Now, one other thing which people like to see that, okay, how SAP HANA is, sometimes people think that SAP HANA is something very different and something very out of the, no, it is same SAP. And now if you see here, now these are all the same, it means you can have a, some additions, of course you have HANA database, but if you are let us say an MM module, you again go to uh, MM module. And again, if you go to MM module, again, you will see purchasing, inventory, logistic advice, verification. <clears throat> so a few things has been de uh, deleted. So for example, you had a uh, import module. So there is no more an import module. That module is gone. And uh, we also had a vendor master transaction code XK01. So that uh, transaction code XK01, is being removed with the business partners. So if you go back here, if uh, we used to go to vendor XK01, and so if you go to XK01, then it says redirecting transaction BP, and the transaction XK01 is obsolete. So that transaction XK01 is obsolete in the new version. <clears throat> now, if I want to create a purchase order, now, this, all these transaction code, ME21N, ME50, ME59, ME22, ME23, all those transaction codes are same. If I'm going to purchase requisition, ME51, which we see all along, that transaction code is there. Um, if you go to open agreement and contract, the transaction code ME31K, the same transaction code is there. If I go to RFQ, which is request quotation, transaction code ME41, that transaction code is there. So all different transaction code has more or less the same. Some transaction code has been removed, um, which you talked about like XK01 is not relevant because you have a business partner function now. 
So now if I go to uh, if I want to create a purchase order, it look exactly same. So like we have been using in uh, SAP ECC 6.0, 5.0 and all that same transaction code. Even the document type which used to have NB, the same document type NB. If I want to use a supplier, so I can use uh, my vendor or supplier, which um, we will be using like in the SAP ECC, this is called vendor, now it is called supplier. Uh, purchase organization, so we can enter the purchase organization. <coughs> which is uh, relevant. So whatever the purchase organization is configured, same purchase organization can be used. <coughs> then we centered the material and uh, I can enter the material. So let's say this is the material and enter the quantity and say there are 10 pieces of the quantity. We enter the plant. So any plant which we have, so we can enter the plant which you configured. <coughs> Tax jurisdiction code could not be determined from delivery address. Okay, we'll see that. Uh, so there is a message here. Uh, there is a price. So if we go to conditions, and if I see the price, then I can enter the price, whatever the you know, $10. Whatever. And then after that, we can say. So a standard view created under the number, and the number is 45000945. This is the same number range. Yeah, number range is also same that 45 number range. This is the PO we have created, and this is how we create a PO in SAP S4 HANA. It is exactly the same way. So we created a purchase order. Now, after creating purchase order, we want to create a guru seat in SAP S4 HANA. So, how can we do guru seat in SAP S4 HANA? So, we'll see that same transaction code, Miko, which we see here. So, if you go back here, if you go to um, Guru seat, and if you go back here, Migo. In other good moment, now there is a one different. With a, there are few transaction code which has been removed. So we have a transaction code like MB1C, MB1B, MB1A. All those transaction codes are gone. Transaction code like MB01, MB02, MB03. Those transaction codes are gone. So those transaction code are no more supported. So. Um, so basically, we had uh, certain transactions like uh, uh, MB1C, uh, MB1B gone, uh, MB1A gone. Uh, we had uh, MB02 not there, MB03 not there. So all these transaction code has been removed. Now. All these transaction code have been replaced with the transaction code MIGO. So with the transaction code MIGO, we can do all the functions in one go. So all the functions can be done with the transaction code MIGO. So some of those transaction code has been removed. So if you see that MB1C, MB1B, MB1A, MB02, MB03, so a lot of those transaction codes has been removed now i go to migo so this is where we have a migo so if you go to migo so in the migo we can do action of guru seat we can do reference of purchase order and we can enter the po number enter now we get a message no guru seat possible for purchasing document 45000945 we are getting this message. Now, why we are getting this message? So for that, this is same message we can get in. Uh, so we go to ME22N and in the ME22N. <clears throat> and here we go to confirmation tab. And I have a confirmation. Now, because system is saying unless you have a confirmation of message order, you cannot create a guru seat. So we remove the confirmation from here and uh, we save it. <clears throat> so need for the confirmation has been removed. We go back. After removing that, we again go back to the Migo and uh, here you go to see purchase order. I enter the pure number, hit enter. <clears throat> now there is no problem. 
So now that error message is gone. And uh, here I have my material number, the quantity 10 pieces, where uh, in this plant, in this is to location, which purchase order. So this was the pure number, line item 10, which business partner, so this is a vendor. I hit item OK. And after hit OK, then I go back and the, there's a check button at the bottom. And I get a check button and then we get a green light. That basically means everything is good. Now, if you see this Migo, this Migo is exactly similar to the Migo which we have seen all along. So in this Migo, there is no difference as far as um, other Migo is concerned. So same Migo transaction code is being used. Okay. So that is what document is. Okay, we got a green light. So one thing which is very important, some of these transaction code has been revoked. MB1C, MB1B, MB1A, MB01, MB02, MB03. All these transaction code which is old is gone. This is MIGO and this transaction code MIGO remain safe. It looks safe, purpose safe, and we post it. So see the message in the bottom, material document has been posted. After posting material document, and um, if I go back, if I want to look into uh, display, and in the display, if I go back, and then here I look at the doc info, this is the doc info created by this user. Go to the finance document. If there is accounting document, that accounting document will appear. So we have an accounting document, and accounting document has been created. This is exactly similar and same way as we have been creating this transaction all along. Now I want to check the stock. So if I want to check the stock, the same transaction code MMB is there so we can go back to the mmb so the same transaction code mmb is supported so this is i can put my material i can put my plant and i hit execute and when we execute then we will see the stock so i have a stock so this is all the same now the next step for us to create a vendor invoice verification and the transaction code for that is Miro. So we go back to the Miro, da da da. In the, this is the logistic invoice verification, document entry. This is Miro. Same transaction code Miro as we have been using all along. Same transaction code Miro applies. Exactly same transaction code. So we go to Miro. Now this is enter invoicing. Here we have invoice date. We select the invoice date. We select the amount. We enter the reference. We enter the pure number. Hit, hit enter, hit enter. Now system is asking me to enter tax direction code. And this is because this is connected to a external tax engine. So we enter the tax direction code. We select tax direction code. Check, we got a green light and we can save it. And we hit enter. So document number 510560 and 888. That is what we are able to create. Now the last step to verify the pure history. So we go back, it is the same all so it is exactly the same. Sometimes people 
I think that I, um, you know, when we are working in HANA, this would be something very different. No, this is all set. So this is my PO. And in the PO, if I go to check its status, so here we have ordered quantity 10, delivered quantity 10, it's still to double zero, and invoice quantity 10. So we delivered, invoiced. Now I go to the bottom PO history. So this is a PO history. Now if I go to PO history, then I did a Gurusi. There's a Gurusi document number for quantity 10 pieces for amount this. Then we get invoice receipt. This is the invoice receipt number. This is the date, amount this. So this is a end-to-end -end cycle in SAP ESPO HANA version 2020. Again, thank you very much for joining the session. Thank you.